What's up, Renegade Nation? Before we begin the video, I'd like to give a big shout out to our most recent Patreon supporters. Sean, Zankoshu, Kregan, Kaiju Paladin Gabriel, Raven Fighter 91, Jasic, Bobby Dolphins 1972, Jimmy McFickus, Saracian, Sean McLaughlin, Samuel Ward, Sir Flame, Caitlin Harrington Robinson, Kaiser Sani, Son of Nemesis, Justin Jensen, Stephen Sharp, Ayla Ann, OXL, The Elemental Viper, Brony Time, Corey Costello, Wolf Jaeger, Carl Lee, Lewis H., Milo Man, and Tyler Johnson. And as always, I'd like to give a big shout out to our executive producer, The Anime Hybrid. Thank you all very much for your support. And if you want to support us on Patreon, feel free to click the link down below to find out more. We'll see you there. When people talk about Star Wars Episode One, they usually just want to talk shit. I love Darth Maul, probably because he didn't have to say a bunch of George Lucas's lines. Oh, what's happening? Oh my, oh, what is this? I'm so happy, if you can't tell. I just enjoyed episode one so much. So apparently Internet Historian has lost the password to his main YouTube account. And is now... have a way to get in there and... I think Get they do, back. but I think where he has two-factor authentication on his... Oh, that could be a thing, like if he lost his phone or something. Yes, if you don't have an authenticator... His phone broke. Yeah, that could be a problem. That's the thing I'll worry about. It's because, I see, my PayPal account got hacked one time. And someone from, like, somewhere in, like, middle of our same state somehow bought some shit on Walmart.com, which I uh. never ordered anything from Walmart.com. So as soon as I saw an email, it's like, you have a receipt from Walmart.com. I was like, uh, excuse me, what the fuck? Uh, what now? Um, ever since then, I've done two-factor authentication on everything that offers <laughs> it. Fair enough. But I'm always kind of paranoid. Like, I did it first on WoW because they were one of the first ones actually to come out with it. And you actually had to buy a little keychain thing yeah, from you've them that they sent to you. That. Yeah, and I still have it. And it works for my Blizzard account still. But I've been really fucking paranoid I lost that thing several times. Yeah. <laughs> and I had to, like, go look for it and be like, where would I have put it? And I've found it, and I still know where it is right now, but... My phone now has all the two-factor stuff on it, and I'm always worried about, like, what happens if I have to replace my phone and that shit gets fucked up and I can't get back into some of my stuff. Yeah, well... And I actually did have one thing already when I switched over phones that somehow I couldn't get back into. I can't remember what it was, but luckily it was something I, I basically never used. I had that here recently. It was my Ubisoft uh, Uplay account. That happened to Coyote as well. So I, I was not able to log back into it and change anything or update anything. Uh, I was still able to play games on that on the account because I remembered the login stuff. And whenever you're logging into games, that's one thing. But if you want to change stuff on your main account, you have to actually, you have to actually have two factor authentication. Yeah. In which I then went into their uh, into their system uh, that they had on there, and I had to wait a few days for them to send me a verification code, and they sent it to my email, and they sent it to my new phone that I had. Now, they did that, and then they disabled two-factor authentication, and then I went back in, and I re-enabled two-factor authentication, and I got a new, I got my Google Authenticator to give me a new code every that's, time. That's what I got, I uh, had trouble with. Same thing with I'm Discord. looking at it right now, Google Authenticator, whatever I had that link to, I couldn't get it back linked again, so I'm just locked mm. out of whatever that was, I can't remember what it Damn. was, though. but apparently something I don't use much, so. Well, yeah. But, like, Authy, I had no problem with. Like, yeah. so I recommend that one if you ever have the option to use it on something, because I use it for Discord and Twitch, and it was fine switching over to my new phone, like, no problem. Yeah. Um, the only thing that worries me about that is, like, would it be no problem for somebody to switch it over to their phone and steal my shit, but... I don't like, know. That's, I that's mean, it's not thing. a huge loss if my Twitch or my Discord gets stolen to me, like, so... Oh, it is for me. Uh, it, yeah, yeah. Like, if anything ever happens to the YouTube channel, I'm, I mean, well, yeah, we're yeah. screwed. The YouTube thing's kind of important. Yeah, which... That's why I'm I'm sort of sad for Internet Historian. I really hope that he gets his uh, account back, his main account back, and uh, that he's able to post videos on there again. But since then, he has resorted to posting... If you guys didn't know, you should go to his second channel because yeah, he's which, doing stuff on there. Still. Which actually, yeah. you can click the link in the title of the video, and will take you directly to his channel, uh, his second channel, Incognito Mode, which is where he has been posting his newer videos. And we're actually going to start with one of uh, his newer videos that he's posted on here, Art. So... 
funny thing about art, my mom is an art teacher, and she has had several things presented at exhibitions and everything, and people have actually paid money for her work. There was one, uh, someone actually paid her $500 for one of her paintings. Nice. Um, mom, of course, was just like, absolutely. It, but as soon as the woman walked out with it, my mom was just like, oh, I spent so much time on that, though. Gosh, and it really looked really good in my living room. Stop, stop. She had to stop herself from, like, second-guessing selling her artwork because, you know, whenever you work on something for so long, you, you tend to get attached to it in some way. And that's what happened with my mom with her artwork. She actually hasn't really been doing much artwork here recently, and it's actually disheartened me because, you know, she's a very talented artist. It's just, you know, she's got the cats. She's also... Uh, she's also uh, having to babysit my nieces and nephews for an undetermined amount of time because, you know, parents, I guess, don't plan out uh, how to babysit their kids properly. Uh, so, yeah, it's a whole thing. But anyway, yeah. the so, I want to talk about art, but this is already a 20-minute video, and I could do like an all-day-long podcast talking about art because that's well, yeah. basically like... It's so one of my number one reasons I think that is gives a purpose to being alive and being a human, pretty much. I could see that so, expression. Like, there's see. all kinds of things I want to, I could, and would be able to say about art that I just probably shouldn't start on because I'll go forever. I understand. So. <laughs> well, anyway, we've got this video queued up here by Internet Historian. Let's give it a watch. Let's see what's up. Here we go. Three, two, one. Art. Art. What is art? Is it wearing a beret? Is it using big words to seem deep? Ugh. Is this goose our art? More importantly, when is art? And when is dinner? And where are my <laughs> pants? And where am I? And have you seen my mum? I'm lost and confused. Please help me. All of these questions and more on the next episode of In the Quarantine. There you go. Listen, Samito, you philistine, you fucking uncultured uh, swine. I need to show you some art. Sure. I don't know any art. Do you know any art? Ah, uh, fuck. So you've got a self-painting on the wall, right? A self-portrait on the wall. You've done it sort of abstract. You're standing next to it in a raincoat and a plague doctor's mask so they don't know that you're the artist, right? And the richest, <laughs> most, yeah. most famous art buyer walks in right yeah and he goes this is a magnificent chimpanzee this is the most beautiful chimpanzee i've ever done in your i've ever seen and you're just standing there like uh yeah yeah it's a chimpanzee it's the best fucking chimpanzee i've ever yeah totally innocuous chimpanzee <laughs> yeah and then he totally. buys 50 million dollars he buys your chimpanzee and now that you got to live with that now you can't admit it's you mm. right the whole value is tied into the fact that he thinks it's an ape <laughs> <laughs> you know I, all right <laughs> i don't know what the point of any of that was but it was fucking hilarious it was <laughs> <laughs> yeah and you're staying there in a random plague doctor outfit next to the painting because you it's don't want people to know that it's you specific oddly right? specific yes it's almost like this has happened to him before so <laughs> yeah is, did that happen to you did it happen to you if it has happened to you please dial 1900 we don't give a fuck <laughs> Anyway, I, I care. I want to hear more. I know. I do like too. That. I love to hear it. <laughs> Frida Kello. Oh my God! One of my mom's favorite artists. God. So watch this. I reckon I can turn this from like a sixty million dollar painting to a like ten million dollar a painting. three a three hundred million dollar. Oh no, she's such a frump too. But isn't the unibrow like a you know like a mark of status? in latin america like only the royal what? only the royal families are allowed to have unibrows and like <laughs> only really powerful women are allowed to have mustaches because it's like a show of military prowess <laughs> yeah yeah for sure you're turning her into a commoner is what you're doing uh-huh um, i mean ah, honestly you're... doesn't look like you did much no these are only minor touches it's got thorns around her neck and a dead bird all right we're fixing this we can cover some of the neck thorns with an airplane pillow Oh, I don't know. What do they wear around the neck and top of the thing? Uh, ropes, typically. <laughs> Dude, that's wow. way better. Yeah, what nice sweater. Realism. It's pretty damn good. Yeah. Oh, man, this is really coming together. Can you also put the chimpanzee in a little employee vest? Yeah. He's kind of he's kind of got that stern look on his face, you know? Like they're paying me just enough for me to not be on my phone, but not enough for me to tell you to stop smashing milk jugs for your TikTok. 
Oh my gosh. Oh, you, Van you Gogh. Take Van Gogh. Right. You hit him with the depression. Dude's as sick as he is, but he's got a YouTube channel. Think about what the fuck that would be like. And we just get this Vincent Van Bro expression as what is this Drakkar Noir vlog that Vincent Van Gogh has uploaded? Look at the motion graphics. Look at the way. <laughs> Why would he use Comic Sans with no outline? <laughs> oh my god! It speaks to his pain. <laughs> It's really, he's using a mix of horizontal and vertical to, to express. People are watching it in film schools like 10 years from now. <laughs> I heard this really interesting anecdote about drinking in Russia. Mm -hmm. So apparently they have this <laughs> thing where if you want another drink, you tap the back of your shoulder. Uh -huh. And apparently, it, uh, I don't know how widespread this is or how, even how true it is but you tap the back of your shoulder. Right. And the reason why is because a couple hundred years ago, back in Russia, they were at war with someone else. And this other nation had a fleet of ships and they were quite a, a powerful navy. And so Russia had to also build a navy very quickly to compete with them. Yeah. And so they commissioned some work from this guy who was who was supposed to be a very good sort of nautical engineer and, uh, and shipbuilder. They have to build this navy. and. They succeed, and it's all thanks to this one dude who had all the knowledge. He had all the knowledge in his brain. Right. So the Tsar, I suppose at the time, said to him, Ah, Boatman, I will give you anything you wish. Name a favor of me. You know what I want to do? Because he's a he was a total drunk. Yeah. And he said, I want to be able to drink in any pub, tavern, bar in Russia for free. Right. And so the Tsar said, Yeah, all right. Um, by order of royal decree. He wrote him this decree that said this guy can drink for free as much as he wants. He used to go around to all these these bars and stuff and, and he would get wicked drunk off everyone else's dime. Right. But one time he lost the piece of paper. Oh, as you do. Idiot. Yeah, exactly. So he has to sort of As you do as a drunk. Back, yeah. Back to the sour and he goes, um, hey, can you can you write me another one of these fucking notes to get out of gym and get free drinks? And he and the guy goes, ah. Oh. All right. Uh, just, you know, keep in mind, I'm a busy man. So he writes him another decree and he goes out and he gets fucking wicked drunk again. And he loses, he loses it again. the next one. He's like, oh, well, I'm certainly not going to pay for drinks. I'm just going to bother the czar again. So he pops back to the czar and he goes, you'll never believe what happened. And the guy goes, oh, for God's sake. He goes, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to get it tattooed on the back of your shoulder. From then on, he would just go around to bars and he would show his bare shoulder and tap on it and go right. that's that's the word of the czar i can drink for free what the fuck? and so ever since then it became <laughs> like enough. a thing you tap the back of your shoulder saying another drink please that is interesting yeah i thought so. i hope i hope that's true i do too <laughs> after the recording i looked into it and it was not <laughs> He wasn't a medical engineer, he wasn't a Navy, he was a, uh, okay, you're going too fast. He was branded, oh shit. Whoa. Sounds worse. So look at this Better face. Ah, so this look at this dude. Yeah, yeah that's, that's <laughs> exactly It's literally the same of. face. Get a load of this fucking guy with the knife. <laughs> it's a lady, surely. With the knife? Yeah, look, that's her arm, isn't it? Is it not the dude whose other hand seems to be on her neck? He's sort of doing like a weird pigeon arm holding it backwards. Yeah, no, like that. Doesn't that. Make any sense. No, I think he's kind of curved around and he's holding his hand on her shoulder and then that's his sleeve there. Oh my god. So that goes dude. to holding her hand and she's got the knife. Now we're Oh, get that's right. He his hand is on her wrist. Damn, Mary Magdalene was gonna I felt like she has an abnormally large arm in that case. Mary Magdalene was about to slice a motherfucker. So he is like, oh shit! Who truly stabbed right this guy? Let's analyze this picture some more. <laughs> you know, you know what's always sort of struck me about Mona Lisa is the tits. <laughs> no. Well, kinda. Yeah, they're not terribly proportional. The cleavage feels like it's in the wrong place. Her right boob is way smaller than the left side of her chest. Well, at least we know that they're real. <laughs> so obviously you don't get imperfections with surgery. Obviously the guy didn't know anything about proportionality. Or women! She's got no eyebrows. Yep. It's just like, why is this the most famous painting? Something about her facial expression. She's smiling but not smiling, and therefore beauty. You wouldn't call her beautiful. I wouldn't. This was his ex. <laughs> he, they, they broke up, but she still held on to one of those coupons from their anniversary. 
where it was like, I will paint you beautifully. And she was like, I don't care if we broke up. I want to utilize my coupon. And he was like, fine, but I'm going to fuck up the shading and make your tits look weird. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to draw you with sriracha sauce all over your sticky fingers. Can I tell you my idea to be the curator to a uh, exclusively meme-hosted art museum? Oh, I like that. It clips in. I'm in like a little tuxedo. And I'm like, welcome. Thank you for joining us. Today, we're taking a look at... Halloween Pepe. <laughs> Let's talk about the history of Pepe the Frog and what led us to Pepe in a fucking pumpkin head. If we were, if we were really good YouTubers, if we were really good YouTubers, mm. yeah. what we would do is make a Facebook profile for her, in turn making a Tinder profile, and see how many right swipes we get by the end of this session. <laughs> just sticking just on a girl holding wow. a dog. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> Lisa Motor. I'm the one in the left. We'd need so many fucking face filters to make that look real. Nah, we just throw some fucking uh, dog ears on it, boom, look like everyone else. <laughs> Be a 9 out of 10 instantly. Oh, Botticelli. I feel like this one's less detailed, but I like it more. <clears throat> yeah, I do like this one a lot more. There's more to look at. Birth of Venus. Venus, Venus, Venus. Venus was, um, blood from the tip of Zeus's penis. Is that what it was? Blood of Zeus's penis. Here it is. The blood from his severed genitals fertilized the earth, and from that spot grew an almond tree. Right. Makes sense. With... Aphrodite. 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 Ah, uh, so I'm completely... Ah, oh, fuck. Yeah, I thought I knew something for you're, once. You, you went Greek when Venus is Roman. I mean... <laughs> Aphrodite is literally the, the parable to venus so yeah that's that happens you know the ancient greeks had 400 vending machines per person <laughs> that's a fact you sure you're not talking about fridges <laughs> nah he says with absolute <laughs> confidence you'd think they'd sneak a waldo in at some point or something just to keep it interesting <laughs> if you're meant to look at it for this one <laughs> we'll, we'll hide that in there god you. dang How nice it would waldo it be? you zoom in what are you doing like, here oh, look at all these flowers and then one of them's like a steam code for cyberpunk and it's like oh hell yeah look at that it all paid off <laughs> i swear I, I could be a better artist than these greek idiots they don't know what the fuck they were doing that's way better you're but. only saying that because she's goth in this one I, i'm not goth disagreeing Lisa. with you but like damn that's all. It's just like, you know what would be better than the Mona fucking Lisa? The Mona Lisa with some eyeliner. Maybe some scrunchies on her arms. That's it. Wait, the background's completely different in that one. It's not just like a dark and Holy deep guy. Fernando <laughs> Vittorio. All right, so better or worse? What do you think? Uh... The cleavage is in the right spot. <laughs> oh my god. Never mind, I'm taking a step back now. Swole Lisa. That one I actually think could be kind of artsy. I mean, the less you paint, the more you're painting. You know what I mean? That's kind of good. Right. I, I'm not mad with that. A lot of it's just about having some fucking color in the room. Yeah, for sure. And that does it. You could just put like a, a vase or something in front of that. And you wouldn't have to worry about the little dude. And then it'd just be like a nice... That would work. It looks like the movie poster for James and the Giant Peach. Although, kind I of, say, yeah. I don't think a lot of these are that bad. That's fine. That looks like any modern piece today. Yeah. Okay, I can see that this wouldn't be in a museum, but this... Absolutely, I could see in a museum and people saying it's, look, blue lady with iPod. <laughs> oh, this says a lot about our modern yes. society. <laughs> I've always thought the screen oh, looked like shit. Much. I mean, now that I'm looking at it for more than like five seconds, it is a... Uh... It's iconic, but is it good? Well, here's what I'm thinking. <laughs> I like it already. It's like a Green Day concert. Oh! <laughs> Why are all artists so fucked up? There he is. Oh. Saturn devouring his son. Yeah. Francisco Goyo. There you go. That crazy motherfucker. Is that supposed to be his arm? How come his arm is so thick compared to this? <laughs> and like the shoulders would end about here, but his body just keeps going up. The dude locking eye contact with you is also a, uh, yeah. oh, a big part of this. He's not focusing on the food. He's just right into your soul. Is he wearing pants? He's got like horse legs, I think is what it, goat yeah. legs, I think is what it's supposed to be. Why doesn't he have goat legs? Maybe he's got goat top. Maybe that explains the Yeah, he started from the he started from the broken end. I don't know. Everything about this painting <laughs> It looks like he's eating a they turd. They really match the uh, awkward angle at which the the shoulder leaves the body. We found him. <laughs> oh god. 
that painting was literally painted in a manic state, right? and then kept in his mansion and never shown to anybody. Oh, really? So when the dude was going insane at the end of his life and just painting and whatever, <clears throat> yeah. like they discovered him dead at his place and that was never supposed to be seen by anybody. Oh, that's really neat. He painted that because it came out of him and he kept it in the house hoping nobody would see it with no intention of showing anybody. Uh, Too do late. you reckon that's the, the direct inspiration for, what's that H.P. Lovecraft story? H.P. Lovecraft, Pickman's Model? Pickman's Model, that's it, yeah. Oh. This dude's one of my favorites because he was a legitimate psycho. He played the character, I guess is what I'm trying to say. He hung out in cabaret bars. He had friends that were dwarves. You know, shit like that you wouldn't do back then. Oh, okay. Yeah, so eccentric. Like, let me let me go get inspired for the next fucking clock I'm about to melt. He would have been an excellent fucking Twitter shit poster, man. Mm. If he didn't die in the fucking 80s or whatever, mm. he'd be an interesting fucking dude to follow on Twitter, I swear. I he bought a it. castle. Like that. Hey, 76 lived only a long life. Soon. He was exhumed. Sub, 2017, it was announced that a judge in Madrid had ordered the exhumation of Dali's body in order to obtain samples for a paternity suit. Okay, so... The thing with Salvador Dali, uh, my mom, my mom liked Salvador Dali's paintings, and I was just, I remember I, in in college, I was like, yeah, yeah, I remember Salvador Dali. My mom loves Salvador Dali's work. I'm gonna, I'm gonna look up, uh, you know, stuff about Salvador Dali. The dude was crazy. The dude was nuts. If he were alive today, he would be a top level shit poster of of epic proportions. On on Twitter, I have no doubt about that. That is a great uh, that is a great analogy for Salvador Dali. Also, that mustache, dude, always just like the older he got, the longer and further it went out. <laughs> it's awesome. It's like the this was two years the ago. Painting world, like. yeah, uh, almost got the almost like a Snidely Whiplash yeah. or a friggin' uh, Captain Hook from Peter Pan. You know the you s- and every time the t- clock ticks, you see. Oh. It's two years ago that this happened. Can you imagine how fucking nerve-wracking that must have been? Like, he finally convinced the judge, okay, we're gonna dig up the body. They go in, <laughs> they dig up the body, and then... They take that truck over to Maury, and now you're on stage in front of the entire audience. <laughs> you are not the father. <laughs> yeah, the no. crowd goes wild. <laughs> and then, and then screaming. Salvador Dali gets out of the car from there. <laughs> <laughs> You're running into the back hallways to God knows where. It's a maze back there. He had a pet ocelot named Babu. Like, people do that now mm-hmm. when you're, like, rich, rich. Yeah. But those fuckers bite. They do. Interesting. What's going on? With his ever-present long cape. Okay, so he used to walk around with a long cape and a walking stick. <laughs> I told you, man. He's and a, a haughty expression on his face. <laughs> I told you, man. I love this guy. He gave actress Mia Farrow a dead mouse in a bottle. hand <laughs> which her mother, actress Maureen O'Sullivan, demanded to be removed from her house. What the fuck is that? I'm telling you, man. <laughs> this dude, Dali, was a motherfucker. He, he was, was a crazy knowing, bastard. Known to avoid paying tabs yeah. at restaurants. I think a couple people did this. By drawing on the check. Yeah, he would, instead of paying, he would do a piece of art on the check. He would do a little <laughs> scribble. And then the restaurant would be like, oh, great. And they always say something about, like, the restaurant not wanting to, like, cash it in. <laughs> Dali appeared in public on a number of occasions with an anteater. Notably on the lead in Paris in 1969, and on the Dick Cavett show. On the show, he surprised fellow guests. Yes, I Dick, remember that. Like, <laughs> I and remember Andy seeing that. Their lap. Uh, There's a crater on Mercury named after him. The Dali Crater. Interesting. Yep. What's this guy eating? What? What's, what's he eating? Oh, he's <laughs> eating noodles. My cousin Vinny eating fresh <laughs> pasta. Hey, what's the matter with you? I like, that. I like the way he's done the color on that. Dude, I like this stuff where people are just eating soup, eating noodles. Look at that like, whole artichoke. That, uh, that looks way better to me than the Mona Lisa. No, I mean, it, it 100%. I mean, the first of all, the artichoke doesn't look like it belongs in this picture. It's light years ahead. Yeah, that's nuts. That's crazy. Look at the way the fucking hat's done. Do you know how hard it is to draw a fucking hat? Have you ever tried drawing a hat? Portraying I can't do depth stick like that is very difficult. <laughs> this is the grandpa who, like ate an entire can of paint thinking it was yogurt. Oh, fuck. Did he die? <laughs> no, he was fine. Oh. But they took this picture of him like, yeah, no, that that seems like the guy who'd accidentally Ooh, eat a can of yeah. paint thinking it was yogurt. <laughs> <That's>, that <laughs> is genuinely scarier to me than the one of the dude <clears throat> and the other dude. If, imagine if you had this at, like, framed on the wall at the end of a hallway 
and you were you were you know walking oh over to the God. kitchen to get something late at night. That would freak me the fuck out. It would. Painting right there. Of course, you had to throw the five nights at Freddy's in there. Dude. Come on. your pets is because it's really hard to oh. get it looking like your pet again. <laughs> they have to. It's essentially his skin <laughs> on a mouse, right? Please yeah. kill me so again. The face looking right with all of the exact oh. nuances of the bone structure and the way that things sit is practically impossible. Oh no! So it doesn't end up looking like your cat or your dog oh. by the end of it. I mean, that can't make you feel better about the situation, right? No. Yeah. yeah. What are you gonna do? Look over and be like, oh yeah, they used to stand there facing the wall like that i miss them so much like no it's gonna be awkward you're, you're oh. now i heard a thing about oh, michelangelo no. that apparently he died a virgin and he didn't really know what <laughs> female anatomy was like and that's why all of his paintings just depict women as muscular men with tits <laughs> on top yeah it's yeah. basically just a dude and yeah. then he tits on top he just really does not do a good job with the tits. <laughs> There's actually a lot of conversation that Michelangelo was actually gay and often drew women very muscularly because that's what he desired women to be more like. He wanted he wanted women to be more masculine in his ideology, uh, his ideal woman. God damn, it's like he a loved chameleon Abby. looking at you, dude. He, did. he doesn't know what they look like. I don't know how to spell Angelo. They'll, they'll know who you're talking about. Nobody's got that many fucking letters in their name anymore. Can you imagine that? You meet somebody at fucking VidCon, and it's like, oh, hey, I'm the internet historian. It's like, oh, hey, I'm Mike. And you're like, is that short for Michael? Michelangelo, yeah. The name's David. Oh, nice to meet Full name, Michelangelo's. <laughs> oh, God. Here. Why couldn't Michelangelo paint women? There you go. Men, <laughs> Men with breasts. <laughs> Look at this. Look at this fucking sculpture. God Holy damn, crap. Dude. Oh, hold on. Because of the stringent controls over female modesty, the idea goes it was inappropriate for women to get in, uh, undressed in front of men. If Michelangelo uh, then knew what women's bodies were like and was clearly able to draw them, we have to assume that the appearance of his women were deliberately chosen rather than through ignorance. I don't... That I feel like that's an insulting take to try and go with. Yeah... No way my man went with that and went, yep, that's a good use of marble. What direction <laughs> is he going? It seems to me like he's going in this direction. Yeah, for sure. So, yeah. so although they're not touching now, they're definitely going to touch. Yeah, or he's oh, like yeah. hovering in place. Oh, that makes sense. Yeah. Maybe they're teasing it. It's like, do you want to be alive? Mm. Should I take one of your ribs? I don't know where in the story this is. Have you seen God's fucking finger? Yeah. Once his finger touches uh. you, you know, you get the knowledge of God. And so he's about to be like, Oh my god, I'm naked and, and all the stuff in the Garden of Eve. But he's already touched this one. Yeah. And he's seen some shit. Look at his <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, he's not interested never at all. Noticed that. That. The kid oh, behind shit. him needs to stop holding his fucking breath as well. You're gonna hurt yourself, my guy. Wait, there's so many more people than I initially thought. Holy <laughs> fuck. It's like There's one down here hoofing one of God God's farts. Look at he's just like down here, he's just like you ate Marino's yesterday, can you please not- Oh, fucking hell, god damn it. <laughs> and God's like, endure, my child. He's like, I wanna just go home, can we leave now? Like he did the, the lines and then he never went back and painted over them. The kids up at the top over God's shoulder also just lacking in detail. One of them's just had, like, the life force sucked out of him. That- okay. That- okay, I, I hate to keep pausing, but the- uh, but Michelangelo, this painting- had a touch-up done, uh, and a lot of people have said it has ruined the finer details of the painting because it completely just over, like, completely washed over the faces when they did the touch-up uh, instead of maintaining it. Uh, it. It actually, a lot of people say it's one of the worst art restorations ever, but still, people turn up in droves to see Michelangelo's The Birth of Man, which... Damn. Oh, Michelangelo did the fucking Sistine Chapel, right? Yeah, yeah that's what this that's, is. Oh, that's what that is. Really? Yeah, I thought yeah. this was on the roof, on the ceiling. Yeah. God, there's it so is. much stuff. Ugh, it's like a Wheels Wally. This guy just on the toilet. <laughs> yeah, it really kind of looks like he started running out of ideas near the end. <laughs> Fuck it. I don't know. They're Probably. playing golf. 
You see Alvin and the chipmunks on their own little cloud over on the left side? <laughs> Wait, what the fuck is happening? I think he's skinning someone. He's he got deflated. Fuck Fucking buff Jesus? That must be buff Jesus. Jesus was the swollest of the gods. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, that's why he was the chosen one. Yeah, exactly. God, holy shit, man. How much did Jesus this dude get played paid by Arnold Schwarzenegger? Do churches pay you? Yeah, the church commissioned him to do this. That's got to be the gig of a lifetime. It's a lot oh. of goddamn work. It, oh, it was. It oh, took him, I think, I forget how to be long to for basically every oh. artist ever. Well, the thing that strikes me about this is this is supposed to be Medusa's reflection, isn't it? Oh, in a mirror, you mean? Yeah, like, well, that's the story. So, it's Hercules, isn't it? No, it's not Hercules. No, it was Perseus. Just, uh, Perseus. Right. So, ah. Perseus walks into the cave and he knows that if he sees her, he'll be literally petrified and turn into stone yeah i want the b-roll to this to just be god of war footage by the way <laughs> <laughs> so he's he's backing into the cave essentially and he's having to look through this shiny piece of gold metal because i don't have the technology for proper mirrors back then and then he he does like a 360 sword move and he cuts off her head. What I imagine this scene was is it's the first time she ever sees herself in the mirror. Oh. Bark in your hair. Get it, get it. Get it. <clears throat> Sorry, I got the virus. I got a ghost to meet. Also, <clears throat> I'm going into a tunnel. Goodbye. I learned a lot about art today. Um. The main channel video is coming. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I, I would say that it would be, except it's not. <clears throat> So, yeah, art. Art! So, yeah, having a mom that was an art teacher, yeah, I, I knew a lot about the artwork and some of the artists that were shown. Uh, Van Gogh was also another one of my favorite, mom's favorites. Uh, and, um, you know, Van Gogh suffered from depression. He wanted someone to truly... He wanted someone to be his muse. <clears throat> so instead... Of him not being able to find his muse because of his depression, he actually turned to the world around him, and he actually made the world in his paintings have such like color and beauty and everything that it completely blew everyone else out of the water. And um, at the time, his paintings were hated; like people did not like what he put out there. It was just like, oh, it's ugly. You know, there's no detail here. So it, it's. And it's only now that, well, it's only here recently that his artwork has become loved. Did you ever see the episode of Doctor Who where they actually went back and found Vincent Van Gogh? I've never really watched much of Doctor Who. Oh, dude. It's one of the most heartbreaking scenes. And also, also it, it I don't want to give it away because if you're interested in watching Doctor Who. But it's it's a really good episode. You'd like it. But yeah, uh, I think after that video, my favorite artist is probably Salvador Dali. Now. Oh, Dali was <laughs> Dali, like, dude. He was just a living person who did not give a shit what other people thought. If you did not like what he was doing, he would deliberately do it in your face just to make you realize how much he did not give a shit. <laughs> and, and having an anteater on a leash just around Paris, just being like, he's like, don't mind him. He's just a he is just a, uh, uh, a little anteater on a, a. Oh, look at him! Look at him! He's eating up all the ants. <laughs> <clears throat> it's like careful now. Watch his tongue. It's having a pet ocelot. <laughs> oh yeah, the ocelot too. Friggin' Babu from uh, from Archer. Don't shoot the ocelot. <laughs> <laughs> Babu zigzag, spray him. And then of course there's a. Uh, uh, there's friggin' uh, just random, uh, random uh, people eating spaghetti. Oh, and also that painting of uh, Saturn eating his child. It's, it's a weird one. Oh, that yeah. one, that one, that actually is. Uh, it ties back into again Greek mythology. Greek mythology. The thing with it is, uh, you know, Kronos. Uh, that's actually one of the origin stories of the gods. Kronos ate every single one of his children and as revenge Zeus uh, pretty much got all of his uh, siblings out of Cronus's belly and Cronus pretty much had nothing left and and the Titans fought against the gods and the gods won and that war between the gods and the Titans is what shaped the earth that's 
that's the uh, that's the Greek mythology origin story. And when you see stuff like Mount Olympus, and you're just like, and you you think he, and you see like lightning storms in the sky at night, you would believe that kind of stuff. You'd believe Zeus is up there and he's angry and all that. That's just like Vikings believing in uh, you know v- believing in uh, m- different mythologies. <clears throat> you know, throughout, uh, for them, like thunder was Thor's hammer. Uh, so. Not just that, but also the aurora borealis. The or- you because have you ever witnessed the seen the aurora borealis? Not in person. Okay, well, imagine if you will, you are a random Viking, and all of a sudden, I'm trying to remember what game I played recently that actually had like. Um... Like a real time like skybox where like Borealis's and shit was show up. Well, imagine you are. So I was like, oh shit, that's really cool because like I've yeah. never seen one in person. So like, just looking up and seeing <clears throat> it in the game, I was like, whoa. But imagine being a Viking out on the water, sailing to unknown places, and you look up and see that. You would think that that is the gods literally dancing in the sky. Yeah. You would see that, and you would just. You would you have no concept of how that happens. No concept of magnetic poles. No concept of uh, jet streams. No concept of magnetism or air pollution or anything like that. You would see that and you would literally think gods are dancing above you right now. And it's crazy to see that and just think and look at it now and we know why. But at the same time, you know, it's the inspirations. That come like Norse mythology. You read about the Rainbow Bridge. Another thing that's the Rainbow Bridge. A lot of people thought that was the Rainbow Bridge. You know, the gods traveling to and from the different nine realms: Alfheim, Helheim, Niflheim, and then of course Midgard, Earth, which is what Midgard was our realm. That's what they called it. So overall, with the the art and inspiration you see from Norse mythology. You know, you see other artwork inspired from Greek mythology, Roman mythology. It's just like the birth of Venus. And then the birth of, uh, and of course, you see uh, Saturn devouring his children and Cronus and all. And it's just, a lot of artwork is inspired by mythology and religious overtones. It's like Michelangelo. Michelangelo in the Sistine Chapel, the birth of man, is considered probably one of the greatest pieces of art ever put ever put on on earth and yet it's pretty much all religious also my mom has seen the mona lisa she went to the louvre and got to see the mona lisa she said there was no flash photography allowed there was you weren't no video recording allowed the only thing you were allowed to do was look at it and you could buy a you could buy a little card that had a picture of the mona lisa on it and that's it Hmm. which shitty but oh well that sounds kind of lame what are you going to do? Everybody already knows what it looks like. There's plenty of pictures of it around. Well, it's just they say flash photography can uh, damage the... That, that's the excuse that they have. Flash photography can damage the uh, damage the, the painting. It's like, and you all don't have glass that can uh, prevent that, but also people can still see it. I mean, every excuse in the world is given as to why people can't take pictures of the Mona Lisa. And I'm just like, dude, you're pretty much pre- trying to prevent the inevitable. People are going to see the Mona Lisa, whether it's online or in person or wherever. It doesn't matter. <clears throat> but anyway, yeah. So, artwork. Art. I'm really just... Uh, I'm blown away by some of the artwork that exists in the world. And I'd love to see some of it. I, I'd it's love the kind to... of art they're going over, too. I feel like you have to have an appreciation for it because people carried on the idea of art throughout time. <coughs> Art's evolved in so many ways into so many different like oh, branches yeah. and stuff since then. And Absolutely, dude. People have gotten better at painting, and digital painting is now a thing where you can do stuff that wasn't even possible like back then. Oh yeah. So I mean, I don't know. Like I feel like there's a lot of underappreciated artists nowadays. There are. And I feel that. Most likely, like, whenever we're all dead and gone, like, far into the future, there will be, like, current day artists that people just pick up and be like, look at this thing this dude made, like, back in 2020, you know? Like, oh, yeah. That's nobody like says shit about this, but it's like, you know, like, basically, it's, it's 3110 now, and, like, check this shit out, and people will be like, dude. <laughs> yeah. 
Well, it's like that guy was ahead of his time. He knew what like the future was going to look like. Well, dude, like hind, hindsight is twenty twenty with that kind of stuff. It's just like people love the hell out of Jimi Hendrix right now, and Jimi Hendrix, I mean, in his day, was fairly popular, but nowhere near as popular as he became after he died. Yeah, and sometimes that's what it takes. Sometimes it takes an artist dying for their work to truly be recognized, which sucks, but. Honestly, it's the same thing with Jeff Buckley. Jeff Buckley received some recognition during his life, but it wasn't until after he died that people went back and were just like, damn, this dude had some great music. He had some great songs. And also, <clears throat> also given everything that, uh, that, given how art goes with people, you know, the, the ones who are popular in their heyday, it's like Antonio Salieri was the most popular, uh, the most popular composer <clears throat> in Austria at the time. But you know who else was a composer at the time who died very young, uh, at the exact same time Salieri was coming up? Mm-hmm. Mozart. Mm-hmm. But Mozart's stuff usually <clears throat> went unnoticed. Uh, but Salieri himself saw what Mozart was capable of, and he was mystified. He was blown away. And now everyone knows Mozart, and almost everyone's forgotten about Salieri. I mean, that's just how history goes. It's how it works every time. But anyway, ladies and gentlemen, I think that's going to do it. This was Art by the Internet Historian on his Incognito Mode channel. Hopefully you all enjoyed it, and hopefully we will see you all in the next one. Like we said at the beginning, if you want to see the original video, link is in the description. Also, click uh, Internet Historian's... uh, Name in the title of the video. It will take you directly to the channel. And I guess until next time, everybody, signing off. I'm Nate. I'm Nick. We'll see you then, everybody. Peace out.